Welcome to Power System Protection Lecture Series. I am Pratap Mysore. Today we will be talking about fault analysis. This is the first of a series of lectures on fault analysis. The intent of this is to figure out what would be the voltages and currents in a network, in an electric network, whether under normal conditions or if, uh, if a fault occurs, then how do we calculate uh, short circuit currents and voltages at various points in the network. Today we will cover basics, very basics, uh, vector representation, polar, Cartesian and exponential, then mathematical manipulation, attraction and subtraction of vectors, addition and subtraction of vectors, and then the use of operators of J and A, and representation of current and voltages, then per unit and percent quantities, impedance networks and network reduction, and introduction to symmetrical components. At the end of the lecture, We'll be just introducing the concepts of symmetrical components, which we will use later um, in, in the series of lectures. Uh, here, um, there is, uh, we also introduce the concept of phasers uh, during this discussion in, at this, in this lecture. If, if you have a vector, it is represented as an arrow with an origin and a terminus, and also a magnitude and an angle if it is in polar form or in a rectangular form or Cartesian coordinates its projection on the horizontal and vertical axis uh, x and y and then the magnet and they are related to polar you can uh, interchange them r equals square root of x square plus y square or theta is tangent inverse y by x and we also have trigonometric uh, representation r uh, cos theta plus j r sine theta and also we have an exponential uh, form r e to the power of j theta now the operator J rotates a vector by 90 degrees in clockwise direction, in counterclockwise direction, not clockwise direction. And then if I take a unit vector as one, and which is horizontal at an angle zero, if I multiply by J, it becomes a unit vector of magnitude one at an angle of 90 degrees from the horizontal and uh, pointing it up, pointing upwards. If you multiply this again by J, then it becomes a vector which is of has the same magnitude as the original one, but it is opposite in direction. Now, uh, the operator A does the same thing, but the shift uh, in angle is 120 degrees instead of nine, uh, 90 degrees as in J. So if I take a vector and rotate, uh, want to rotate by 120 degrees, I multiply with an operator A. Essentially, it becomes AV, but AV voltage is leading the A phase voltage by 120 degrees. Similarly, if I multiply again by an, uh, an operator A, it becomes A square V. And then if I rotate it again, it becomes A cube, which is same as the original vector. So A cubed uh, equals one. And then uh, mathematically, it is if you take the projections on the horizontal and vertical axis, uh, A equals minus 0.5 and plus J 0.866. And A square is minus 0.5 minus J 0.866. And then vectors you can add and subtract. You just uh, put one vector at uh, uh, origin on the first vector's uh, terminus. And then if you join the origin of the first vector with the terminus of the second vector, we get the sum. And similarly, A minus B is the uh, same way. You can uh, 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 you know, add, uh, change the direction of B and then uh, Put the origin of minus b on the terminus of a and then if the vector from a the origin of a to terminus of minus b will give me a minus b a multiplication if you multiply the easiest way to do that is using exponential uh, the magnitudes get multiplied and the exponents get added division the magnitudes gets divided get divided whereas uh, exponents get subtracted and uh, in powers uh, either uh, you know, and the magnitude goes to the power of that, uh, by the power by which we are uh, raising it, uh, whereas the exponent gets multiplied. And square in uh, nth root, uh, it's the same thing, it's the nth root of the magnitude, whereas one nth, um, yeah, you get the exponent gets divided by n. Relationships, uh, if you look at it, uh, if you look at three phase system, they're all 120 degrees apart, and then, uh, VAB will be square root of three times uh, the magnitude of VA, but it leads that by 30 degrees. Now let's look at a vector rotating at, uh, if you look at a vector, uh, 
uh, rotating in a, in a counterclockwise direction at the same frequency as a sinusoidal waveform at 60 hertz. It's angular frequency. We are looking at it here. Now, if you look at the projection of any point um, of uh, that vector on the vertical axis, that will be pretty much equal to the sine magnitude of the, of the vector that is I m sine omega t plus theta. Uh, uh, that is what we are looking at it here. And then uh, a period of, uh, uh, of this sinusoidal waveform is one hour frequency of that. So if you look at it, if you have a sinusoidal waveform, the magnet, the vector V is rotating at an angular frequency and then uh, the angular in radians, it is, return, it is given as 2 pi f. So it is a rotating vector and we call this a phasor. And then here there is a statement on RMS, which we will discuss in the next one, where the heat generated by a sinusoidal waveform, we can uh, take the magnitude, peak magnitude, and then convert it as a root mean square value. And the effective heating will be same, whether it is an AC current or a uh, direct current. So now if you look at this, I RMS is uh, I m sine theta squared divided by two pi. It is a root mean square, and then you are integrating it from 0 to 2 pi. When you do that, I get IRMS as IM by square root of 2. Typically, this is represented by a capital letter I. In three-phase system, phase sequence or the, I, I, or the order is the order in which they crest different values. Suppose if I am an observer and uh, look at uh, the uh, system which is rotating uh, from your sort of side, you will see that it is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. And then uh, if when first A goes to the peak, then next B comes to the peak, and then C comes to the peak, then it is called A, B, C. From my side, when I look at it, it is going in this direction, A, B, and C. And then these are uh, crest values are coming in. One half, uh, first A comes and B comes, and then C comes. These are, uh, they, you know, it, uh, that is how uh, these are represented. We call it a positive sequence. We will talk about the sequence numbers again. This is a regular rotation of a generation. Uh, generators produce uh, voltages in this particular fashion. The nomenclature varies from different company or countries. Uh, we call it ABC. Uh, some people call it one, two, three. Then there is RST in Europe and RYB also in Europe and Asia. There are other uh, probably other uh, letters uh, in, which are used in different parts of the world. Uh, Three-phase system, if the voltages and currents are balanced at every point in the system, it has got the same peak and they are 120 degrees apart. Now, VB has the same magnitude as VA, but it is 120 degrees out of um, uh, lagging that VA and then uh, similarly VC, and we call this a positive sequence and this is called a balanced system. For this to be true, it is important to know that the imp network impedance must be perfectly balanced and generator voltage generation voltages are also balanced. Typically generated, oh sorry, generated voltage will be balanced, but uh, the network may not be a balanced network. We will talk about it later. And then when a fault occurs, then there is a shift in voltage. When a A to ground fault occurs, A phase voltage goes to zero at that fault point and whereas B and C phase remain the same, so it becomes an unbalanced condition. So we will see how we can uh, determine voltages at various points for a fault at a location. In all these situations, make sure, uh, just assume that the frequency is still constant. We are assuming that the frequency is still constant. Now, voltage uh, is represented as a V with a higher potential uh, letter, and then the second letter tells you where it is, uh, when it is lower potential. For example, A to ground fault, VA, G, we write. Normally, the G is dropped off, we write it as VA. Whereas if I'm looking from phase, from phase A to phase B, we represent it as VAB, okay? A balanced uh, three-phase uh, system, if you have, there is no need for us to solve it as a three-phase network. You can represent it as a single-phase network and then do all the calculations and calculate voltage and current and then just shift it by 120 degrees or 240 degrees to get uh, C phase and B phase voltages and uh, currents in other phases, right? It's very simple. So if I have a balanced network, 
I can always uh, convert that, uh, just uh, con use a single phase representation of that and solve for voltages and currents at various points and then just translate it to other phases by shifting by 120 degrees. So that is the whole intent of this uh, particular series of lectures on fault analysis. So now, uh, if you have a phase to phase voltage, it will be root three times phase to ground. And then now let's look at the power. Power is the product of the voltage and current. And then the current through a resistor, uh, yeah, yeah, if I know that, or if I, let's take an example of a resistor, if there is a current flowing through the resistor, we know the voltage drop across the resistor. So the power dissipated by the resistor as heating is V times I. Uh, that is the voltage drop across the resistor and current through the resistor, right? Now let's look at the concept of active and reactive power. Uh, v, is, uh, v times I is, the, is instantaneous power, where I is leading the voltage by an angle of theta here, uh, sorry, phi. So if I look at that Vm I, uh, sine omega t times Im sine, uh, uh, sine omega t plus phi, then if you look at it and solve for this, I can write this as uh, P equals uh, uh, instantaneous power equals capital P here, which is now can be written as V times I cos phi, and V and I are the RMS quantities. You should see and know that. And then Q, uh, it can be written as vi sine phi. So the instantaneous power is p times 1 minus cos of 2 omega t, q times sine 2 omega t. The only thing you need to know is the power is oscillating at twice the frequency of the system. And then if you look at the p uh, quantity, it goes from 0 to 2p because it is 1 minus cos 2 omega t. And then whereas q varies from minus q to plus q. So if you take the average power in one cycle, for the, is a capital P. This is the product of the voltage and current in phase with the voltage, the current in phase with the voltage. This is called the active power. And then uh, the average value of Q is zero or one cycle. This is the energy stored in one half cycle is exchanged and returned to in the next half cycle. It stores and then it returns that energy in each half cycle. So the, this is a product of voltage and the current in quadrature with the voltage. This is called the reactive power. So now three phase power is V times I, and then it can be written as three times V phase to ground voltage times I phase, or root three times V phase to phase times I phase. These are all basic things. You can go back to any electrical engineering book and they will cover that. Now let's look at the per unit and per value. We are always expressing the voltage so far as 1000 volts or uh, you know, uh, 100 volts, uh, 1 kV or 100 kV or 230 kV or 345 kV. So now live, let's look at it differently. If I have a 100 kV voltage, I can express it as a percentage of what would be the as a, of the normal voltage or nominal voltage uh, in a 115 kV system. So it is 100 by 115. It can be written as 0.89 per unit of its nominal value. Similarly, if I multiply this with 100, it becomes 89%. In calculations, per unit is used and percent also can be used. But if you use percent, you have to be taking care of that 100. So a lot of times we just use per unit. In per unit system, we need to assign a reference value because in this case, we took 115 kV as a voltage nominal. So and based on that, we expressed 100 kV as 0.89 per unit. So now if I, let's look at a simple system here. It's a three bus system, which we have been talking about from uh, lecture one. Uh, it has a generator, 800 MVA, 23 kV. Then it's the uh, voltage is, uh, then it is stepped up to 230 kV and to transmit power from uh, one substation to another. Then we step it down to 13.8 to provide distribution voltage to serve the load. <clears throat> now we have several voltage levels and impedance is connected at these uh, different voltages. We had 23 kV, 230, and 13.8 in this particular example. And the calculations become very difficult to go from one uh, level to another level. So that is why we define a reference value called the base value. So we have power, we have voltage, we have impedance and current. But these are all related, right? Voltage times the current is uh, MVA, uh, and then, uh, 
uh, V divided by I is the impedance essentially in a single phase system if I take that. So now most of the industry we use voltage and then the power as the base quantities. We call them as a reference quantities. For a three phase system, V phase to phase voltage is used as a reference number value and three phase power is used for the base. And then uh, typically we use 100 MVA as the base in, uh, K in most of these calculations. Let now, if I know the KV and power, base impedance is nothing but uh, KV squared by MVA, uh, the, you know, as, uh, that is the base impedance, and the current is uh, MVA multiplied by 1000 divided by square root of three times uh, KV. Uh, these are all simple quantities. You can go back and look at them again. Uh, generator now, let us look at the system base quantities, 23 KV and 800 MVA. If I convert what is the norm rated current for this generator, it is 20,082. And the base impedance is KV squared by MVA, I told, 223,000 squared divided by 800, 0 0.66125 ohms. So now, if I have the space impedance of 0 0.66125, and if I pass the current of uh, 20,800 amps, what will be the voltage drop? That will be equal to 23 KV, okay? And then generally, uh, if I, generally the base MVA of the system is chosen as 100 MVA. In the previous example, you have to look for the three phase or single phase quantities. I just gave it uh, as an example, go back and check that. Uh, generally, the base MVA is chosen as 100 MVA and then uh, not the individual rating. For example, generator is 800 and your transformer can be 950 or yeah, your distribution transformer can be 47 or 50 or uh, 15 MVA, it could be as low as that. So we don't go back and convert every impedance based on different MVAs. We just use a 100 MVA as a base and then do that. Let's look at the generator. The generator uh, rated MVA is 800. So it's uh, MVA uh, based on MVA, what is this per unit? The 800 by 100, it is eight per unit. So now if you look at the current, uh, also, it will be 8 per unit uh, because base current is 2510, full load current is 20,082, 20,082 divided by 2510 will be equal to 8. <clears throat> Whereas what is the voltage? It is at 1 per unit, which is 23 kV. Now we are shifting to 230 kV. Now what is the voltage base, which is 1 per unit is 230 kV is uh, taken as 1 per unit uh, voltage. Uh, the base current now at one uh, at 230 kV is 251 amps on 100 MVA, so, but it is 800 MVA. So your full load uh, one uh, eight per unit current is 2008.2, and then this is on 100 MVA 230 kV base. So if you look at this, the eight per unit remains the same if that much amount of power is going from the generator all the way up to the end of the uh, on the transmission system. The per unit values remain unchanged over the voltage. It is invariant of the voltage changes. So that is very important for us. So it helps us to model the system in per unit, uh, irrespective of the voltage, and then represent it as a simple network. And then also it is very important for us to know that we can use this for uh, uh, finding out how the load is shared. If there are two transformers with the same impedance uh, at different MVA, uh, then uh, percentage or per unit impedance on different MVA, then your voltage drop across that remain uh, pretty equal if it is loaded appropriately. So we will go through that in some other cases uh, in the future. And then calculations are very easy. So what we did here was we had impedances and voltages at different levels. We converted them to per unit and got rid of this transformation from low side to high side or high side to low side. So these are the basic formula which we are using. If you want to know the impedance, then uh, you, uh, you can convert it into per unit by dividing the impedance by Z base. Essentially, this is Z base. One over Z base is this number, okay? And then percentage is just multiplied with that. And then if you have a two different voltage levels, or if you have a different tap on the transformer, you want to convert it into nominal voltage, then you use these uh, equations. This is covered very well in Network Protection and Automation book. Please do go through that and look at it. This is just a refresher for you 
on uh, mathematical fundamentals used in power systems. Three phase systems, if you look at it, single phase VA is uh, IA phase to phase times I phase. Uh, if you look at it, uh, then uh, line current is square root of three times IA here. And then it becomes root three V phase to phase times I line it is three phase VA on the delta side. It turns out to be same on the Y side too. Okay, uh, root three VA V times I will give you the three phase power. Now, what is it? Now we know that by using per unit, we can reduce and get rid of the voltage variations, uh, voltage levels, and just represent it everything as a per unit uh, impedance, and then uh, do the calculations. And then how do we really use what uh, equations we use or what uh, uh, laws we use to reduce it? First is Ohm's law, voltage is I times Z, and Kirchhoff's the current law is sum of all the currents at a junction should be equal to zero. And then mesh uh, is a voltage mesh uh, law is a loop law, we call it. Sum of all the voltages in a mesh or in a loop must be equal to zero. These are used. Superposition is also used in the mathematical analysis where you first look at the currents generated by one source and then you find what is the current, uh, uh, you know, which is, uh, uh, yeah, which is generated by the dri driving voltage by the second source and we can add them and use method of superposition, which makes this, uh, uh, this uh, analysis simple. So similarly, we have Thevenin equivalent for at the fault point, we can see we can look back at the system and reduce it to an equivalent voltage and a series impedance on that. And just, uh, you know, and then Norton's theorem is just a, a, a a current equivalent of the source, you have got a current source with a shunt impedance uh, across the current source uh, for calculation purposes. Then we also use uh, delta Y transformations because we can have the loads connected in delta and Y to just make it sim uh, simple uh, series network. You make, make use of these to convert uh, different impedances uh, into that. These are the various tools available for us as of today. Now let's look at the three phase system. A uh, three phase system has got uh, different types of faults. Uh, A to B to C, three phase fault. It can involve ground or it did not involve ground. Or line to line fault, there are three types A to B, B to C, C to A. Double line to ground A to B, A, B, G, uh, B, C, G, or C, A, G. Or single line to ground, A phase to ground, B to ground, or C to ground. Now if I have a three phase fault, then it is a perfectly balanced fault, it is affecting all three phases, we can still represent it as a single phase and use our Thevenin's uh, theorem or Norton's theorem or any delta Y transformations and we can calculate current and voltages at different points. But now if it is a phase to phase fault or a phase to ground fault, then the effect of this on other phases, it's very difficult to solve for currents and voltages phase currents and phase voltages at different points of the network. That is where symmetrical components was proposed uh, to help this to resolve unbalanced system of currents and voltage in set of balanced quantities so that we can go back and represent a, a, a unbalanced system due to a fault by a set of uh, balanced networks and we can solve this as a single phase uh, uh, electrical system. Okay. This was done in 1940, 1918 by Fortescue. It is a 38-page paper uh, which was published. Uh, it's called Method of Symmetrical Coordinates uh, Applied to Solution of Polyphase Networks. What uh, he propounded or proposed was if there is an N system of N vectors, we can represent it as a system of, uh, you know, where N is a prime number, a system of N minus 1 equally spaced vectors in space and one uh, equal set of uh, n equal vectors, which are all in parallel with each other. So that is what his uh, uh, theory was. And now let us look at a three-phase system. Uh, we have three-phase voltage and current uh, represented as vectors, or fair phases, right, as vectors revolving at an angular frequency of two pi f radians per second. The components uh, must be sinusoidal if they, if they replace that they must be sinusoidal and they must be represented as vectors rotating at the same angular frequency. 
So if I have an unbalanced set of phases, uh, then I have to represent them as a balanced set of phases, uh, that, you know, in uh, different quantities. Because it is a three-phase system, as per uh, the theory, you know, propounded by Dr. Fortescue in 1918, it is uh, uh, two sets of uh, vectors uh, which are rotating at an angular frequency, which is uh, determined by the system frequency, but uh, they are equally spaced, and there is one set of vectors. They are all uh, parallel to each other. The set of three vectors run parallel to each other. This was what is propounded. So now, if I look at it, I can use any unbalanced network, and I plan to represent it as three sets of balanced networks, uh, balanced uh, voltages and uh, currents, sorry, not networks. Uh, I have a, a sequence network A1, B1, and C1. So if you look at it, the A comes to uh, the peak first, and then the B, and then the C, and this is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. That is our generation uh, voltage uh, rotation. And this is called the positive sequence. And the second one, when you look at it, it has it is rotating in a counterclockwise direction, but the phases which come to the peak are A, C, and B. Or if you rotate it in the opposite direction, then it becomes A, B, C. So I have a positive sequence rotating in the counterclockwise direction, and then and I can look at the negative uh, second one as the one rotating in the clockwise direction with keeping the same phases A, B, C as a rotation, a phase rotation. So this is called the negative sequence. And then the third one, I have three sets of vectors. They are all moving uh, in counterclockwise direction in the same, but they are all parallel to each other, A0, V0, and B0, uh, C0. So if you look at this, these three vectors, we call them as zero sequence, and these is called the negative sequence, and then the first one is called the positive sequence. What are the relationship between, uh, what is the relationship between uh, each phase? VA1 is uh, taken as a reference. VB1 is A square VA1 because we are rotating it by 240 degrees and clockwise. VC1 is A times VA1. Similarly, VA2 is a reference here in the second uh, set of uh, uh, vectors. Uh, VB2 is A times VB2. Here you are rotating in a counterclockwise direction by A. So VB2, A is an operator which rotates any vector in counterclockwise direction by 120 degrees. That is what is very important for you. Similarly, VB2 is A, VA2. VC2 is A square VA2, whereas VA0, VB0, VC0. Now, what do we measure? We measure the phase voltages, right, or phase currents at the fault point. And now we need to convert that into sequence uh, components to make them equal to so now we have to find the relationship between phase quantities and these sequence quantities. That is what uh, uh, we are doing. We covered it already. Uh, we are just telling that they are 120 degrees apart and with ABC rotation is positive, ACB is negative, and then zero sequence, they are not separated in time. So now we write down an equation. We say that A phase has got all these three, right? It is VA1 plus VA2 plus VA0 and VB is VB1 plus VB2 plus VB0. Uh, and then uh, uh, yeah, that is A square V1, uh, AVA2 and AVA0. And VC is VC1, VC2 and VC0, which can be written as AVA1, A square VA2 and AVA0. <clears throat> now I'm adding these three, we can get three VA0. So we know the phase voltages. If we just add them and divide it by three, I get the magnitude of the zero sequence quantities. Similarly, when I multiply the equations, first last three equations with one A and A square and add them, I get VA plus A, VB plus A square VC. If I do that, I get the positive sequence quantity voltage. And similarly, if I multiply them by one A square A, I get the negative sequence. So now we have mathematically shown that the phase voltage is what we measured. We can get the sequence components positive, negative, and zero sequence with the yeah with these mathematical relationships. So now that is V zero is one third of V A uh, V B V C. V one is one third of V A A B B plus A square V C, and V two is one third of V A plus A square V B plus A V C. So let's uh, stop here and then continue in the next lecture um, on on this. And before that, we have got one or two more slides. We will look at it. 
resolution of unbalanced mathematically also we could have gone and added the vectors VA1, VA2 and VA0 to get VA and uh, we could have done that too. So now uh, if you want to represent it in matrix form, uh, it is uh, VA0 is so one, uh, VA0, VA1, VA2 sequence uh, vectors can be represented as um, one third of mathematical uh, vector uh, uh, matrix multiplied by the phase vector. Similarly, the currents can be represented. You can go back and look at the reference in uh, uh, Network uh, Protection and Automation Guide chapters three and four, and they would cover it. And we'll continue with this in the next class. Thank you.